As an interesting application of differential equations, let us consider the predator-prey system. By predator, you can think of some big fish, and prey, you can think of some small fish. Small fish eats some green stuff, and big fish eats small fish. Let's denote the number or the concentration of small fish x as a function of time t, and let's denote the concentration or number of individuals of the big fish of the predator as y as a function of time t. If there are only small fish, no big fish in the system, then they eat green stuff and they get stronger, have children and more and more population, so the derivative will be, that means how the population grows, will be proportional to the number of elements, to the number of individuals, with some constant, say, A, where A is a positive constant. Assuming they have enough nourishment, enough green stuff to eat, and good living conditions. This is a simple differential equation with the solution x at t is e to a t times x at 0. And the time evolution of the population is exponential. <coughs> On the other hand, if we have big fish alone, no small fish, then the population goes down, they die out, with some constant minus b. While b is again a positive constant, so minus b is negative. This can be also solved to get yt will be e to minus bt times y0. And due to the negative exponent, <coughs> this goes exponentially to zero. And now assume that in our system, our biological system, both x and y are positive and they interact in the form that when a big fish consumes a small fish, then the number of small fish decreases, but the big fish gets stronger and have more children. So we can add new terms here, x dot will be ax minus some constant times x and y. And this corresponds to the probability of the big fish meeting the small fish. And y derivative will be minus by plus some constant xy because due to the interaction the predator individuals are stronger and have more children. Now, before we solve this, let me show you one trick how to reduce the number of parameters. Here we have one, two, three, four parameters. If we want to do some numerical study of such a system, then we must choose many different initial conditions and many different parameter values, and then using some numerical method to compute the time evolution and observe what happens. And if we have four parameters and we want to study the system for, say, 1000 values for the parameter A, and 1000 values for the parameter B and C and D, we have many, many computations to do. So it will be very nice to reduce the number of parameters. Actually, this can be done very easily, very efficiently. And the trick is that we can choose the units in which we measure x, y, and time. Changing the units means some sort of rescaling. It does not change the qualitative behavior of the system, just the numerical values will be, in this factor, different, but it is very easy to recompute 
the factor to recompute to the original scale, to the original unit. So, let's introduce a new a variable, x new, by the following formula. x, the old value, will be x new times some positive constant alpha. Similarly, we can introduce y new by rescaling the, the, the population of the predator by some positive constant beta. And we also we can also rescale time t nu times some constant gamma. And now we can choose these three possible constant as we wish. Uh, if we write the derivative as dx divided by dt and dy divided by dt, then introducing these three new variables, we get dx, which is alpha dx nu divided by dt, which is gamma dt nu, and here we have a x which is alpha x nu instead of nu, let me just write a dash minus c alpha beta x nu y nu and similarly dy will be beta dy nu divided by gamma dt nu and this will be minus b y is beta y nu plus d alpha beta x nu y nu. Well, we wanted to reduce the number of parameters and it turns out that we have increased the number of parameters from 4 to 7. Too bad. Well, but this can be simplified a little. First, we can divide by alpha. We can divide by beta. We can multiply by gamma. And we can multiply by gamma this equation as well. Well, and now, here we have a new parameter. A times gamma. We want this parameter to be nice. Nice value is 1 because then we have x alone. We want A gamma to be 1. Can this be done? Can this be achieved? Sure. We can choose gamma any positive value. If we choose gamma is 1 over a, we are done. If gamma is 1 over a, then this is equal to 1. Then we have another parameter here, c gamma beta, and we want this to be equal to 1. And gamma a is 1 over a. Can this be done? Yes, sure, no problem. If we choose beta to be a divided by c, then this is equal to 1. Unfortunately, b times gamma cannot be makes to be equal to 1 because b is given and gamma is already chosen. But here we have d times alpha times gamma. But now, yeah, so we want d times alpha times gamma, which is 1 over a, we want this to be 1. And this can be done by choosing alpha equal a divided by b. <coughs> b. 
And then this is equal to one. Well, and we have just one single parameter, well, two letters, but the product is all that matters. So if we denote A to be B times gamma, and gamma is one over A, so if we denote small a as b divided by a, then we arrive at a system, and now uh, let's forget the index nu because uh, t and x and y will be always the new values, the rescale values. So if we write it as dx, d, dx dt in the new coordinates, and we can factor out x, and we have x times y minus y, and similarly dy dt, and we can factor out y, and we have x minus a. So, this was the first interesting thing, how to rescale the variables so that we can reduce the number of parameters. This is a very useful trick, very useful approach, which is done in chemical engineering and, and physics uh, very often. Okay, so let's consider the predator prey system in this form. We have two differential equations of the first order, autonomous, there is no time t explicitly giving in, uh, given in the right hand side. But unfortunately the equations are not linear, here we multiply the unknown objects, so this is a system of non-linear ordinary differential equations. Uh, we cannot solve the system similarly as we could for the uh, individual equations. But we can still come to some useful conclusions, some useful results. If we divide these two equations, say second dividing by first one, then dt dt reduces and we arrive at dy dx is y x minus a divided by x, y minus y. And we can look at this equation as an equation for the unknown function y as a function of x, at this formula. And this can be solved, or solved, this can be rewritten in the following way. Uh, we can use separation and we can arrive at dy multiplied by 1 over y and divided by y on the left and dx multiplied by x minus, x minus a and divided by x. Now we can integrate and here we have 1 over y, the integral is logarithm of y, we don't write an absolute value, we consider positive, positive values only. y divided by y is 1, integral of 1 is y. And on the right, similar story x divided by x is 1, integral of 1 is x, minus a, and 1 over x, integral is logarithm of x, plus a constant. Uh, let me write it minus a constant. I will need this a little bit. And this can be written as x minus a logarithm of x plus y minus logarithm of y is equal to c. And now here you have sum of two terms. 
One of them as a function of x, the other as a function of y. Let's have a look at this term. A is some positive constant. If A is 1, then we have the first term in the form x minus logarithm of x for positive x. This is an expression that looks like that. Logarithm looks like that. Minus logarithm looks like that. And adding x for small x does not change the behavior too much, but for large x, x goes faster than the logarithm of x, and the function will look like that. Well, we can consider the derivative of this, which will be 1 minus 1 over x, and this shows clearly that for x is equal to 1, the derivative is equal to 0, and otherwise, for x is greater than 1, this is small, the derivative is positive, and the function indeed goes up, and for x between 0 and 1, this is dominant, and due to minus, the derivative will be negative, so the function indeed goes down, decreases. And at some positive value, at, at 1, we have some global minimum of this expression, x minus logarithm of x. If we introduce some uh, other value a, then the, this minimum just changes to another position, but the qualitative behavior is the same. So we have some function that has a minimum like that, as a function of x, and we add a function which has again a minimum as a function of y. It very roughly, very roughly approximates the expression x squared plus y squared. x squared has again some minimum as a function of x, y squared has some, has some minimum as a function of y. x squared plus y squared as a function of two variables is a function which has the graph in the shape of rotational paraboloid. Well, some dish-like surface. This is not the parabola, but still, if we add these two functions, each of them having this local minimum, then the left hand side, as a function of two variables, x and y, will be again a function with a graph in this dish-like shape, this like dish like form. And now we want this function to be equal to a constant. So we cut the graph of this function into xyz space with a horizontal plane. Namely we consider one contour line. If C is lower than the sum of the minima empty set. If c is equal to the minimum of this function as a function of two variables, one single point. And if c, the, the function value, is above the minimum, <coughs> then cutting this dish-like shape with a horizontal line above the minimum cuts the surface in a closed curve like that. And for various values of C, we have various curves like that. And this is the situation in the xy plane. The contour lines of this function as a function of two variables. And this gives a nice explanation of the behavior of this system. For some initial condition, say this one, a very small number of small fish, x, and a very small number of big fish, y. Almost no big fish, and the small fish consume the green stuff and grow. The number of population of x increases. When there are enough small fish, then the predators now have more to eat, 
and the number of producers, the number of big fish, increases as well. And if there are more big fish, they consume the small fish and the population of small fish decreases. And if there are almost no small fish, then the big fish begin to starve and their population goes down. Well, and from this result we see that this has a cyclic operation, cyclic behavior, periodic behavior, and the two functions x and y as a function of t will oscillate like that with the same period. It is easy to find this special point which corresponds to an initial condition where x and y are constant. Constant x means that the relative is equal to zero. And this will be equal to zero either if x is zero or y is one. And constant y means that the y derivative, the derivative of y is equal to zero. And this happens when x is zero or uh, x is equal to a. The point zero, zero is here the origin. Yeah, this is a trivial fact that if there are completely no small fish, no big fish, nothing changes in time and the two zero functions are a solution of this system. If x is zero, y is zero, everything is fine. And this, this non-trivial point corresponds to the solution x is equal to a from here and y is equal to 1. x is equal to a, y is equal to 1. So this is the unique stationary point for positive coordinates. And this corresponds to a special initial condition with the constant solution sometimes called the stationary behavior or stationary solution of equilibrium solution and for other for other initial conditions we get this type of oscillatory this type of periodic behavior